Hey everyone, I'm Jason, and welcome back to the Epic Battle Fantasy Collection. Today, we're going to be playing through the original Epic Battle Fantasy, uh, the first game in the series of Flash games that were released online and are now available on Steam. Uh, before we begin, I will give a bit of my own personal history with the game. Uh, after I had obtained a new laptop many years ago, I found the original Epic Battle Fantasy game and played through it and very much enjoyed it. But when I made it to the final boss, I died and then got sent back and had to replay a third of the game in order to reach the final boss again because there were only two save points in the game where I proceeded to die on the final boss and had to do the same thing again. This happened several times until I gave up. Uh, when I decided to give the game another go, I had forgotten what it was called, so I couldn't find it. After several years had passed, uh, eventually I found the Epic Battle Fantasy series again, and played through several of the larger, later games, which thankfully had many more checkpoints, uh, and enjoyed those very much. But I don't believe I ever actually finished the original, <laughs> uh, so... That's what I plan to do today, now that it is available, in this package on Steam. So for this portion of the video, I have a very small webcam window, because I am going to read about the game's history from the game's creator. Epic Battle Fantasy, first published May 1st, 2009. Battle your way through waves of enemies and powerful bosses. You start with level 99 characters. There is no adventuring or leveling up. You simply select commands from the menu to make enemies die. This game is played with the mouse, and it takes about one hour to beat. So, I like my videos to be about 20 to 30 minutes long, so I plan to split this into uh, two or more videos, depending upon how much additional time my commentary adds to the playthrough. Progress cannot be saved between sessions, but there are checkpoints if you die. So I plan to record uh, this video series all at once, um, even though you will be seeing it in separate installments. History. If I had known that the Epic Battle Fantasy series would come to dominate my life, perhaps I would have given the title of the first game some more thought. I had just started to learn object-oriented programming at university, and after reading a textbook about Action Script 2, I felt ready to start programming a real game. My previous games were very simple by comparison, and this was the first game where the logic was more complicated than score counters or go-to-and-play statements. So, I know nothing of programming, or very little of programming, so um, that doesn't mean too much to me, but it might to you. By now, I had been animating for around five years, so I was comfortable with that. Programming was the only obstacle. In the prototype section of this collection, you can see some of my early prototypes of RPG battle systems. Once I figured out how to use functions, control the turn order, and give actors different stats, I was ready to get started. I believe the first two EBF games took around one month each to make. Epic Battle Fantasy has been made more forgiving in this re-release. I wanted to keep the clunky, unforgiving feel of the original, as this is how the old Final Fantasy games on NES felt to me but I decided that it would be best to add some checkpoints at least. Thank you. <laughs> I'd as much appreciate it. You needed those in the original too. <laughs> Here's a list of changes. Checkpoints added after every boss. Volume controls added and minor bugs fixed. Added the zero difficulty setting. Copyrighted characters have been replaced with lookalikes. New soundtrack by Forger434. That's 12 whole tracks. So yes, uh, using copyrighted characters from other creators. When you are making a free product, is not that big of a deal, but when you are selling something 
um, that you are making money off of, uh, you want to avoid uh, using other people's property. So, yeah, that is the background information about the game. And after I tweak the webcam settings, we will begin. Epic Battle Fantasy, version 2.0. Play, gallery, credits, exit game. So we have Matt and Natalie, two recurring characters throughout the series on the title screen here. How to play. Anyone who's played a turn-based RPG should find this one self-explanatory. Played completely with the mouse, select commands from the menus, and hence make the enemies die. Enemies are weak to certain attacks. Checkpoint after every boss. Choose a difficulty setting, so I'm going to choose the normal setting, which, with the checkpoints, should be easier than it was in the uh, 1.0 web version. Buy some potions before ye go. Funds, 14,000. So, the shopkeep looks an awful lot like Anna from the later games, so that may or may not be the same uh, character we meet in the later installments in the series. So Max Potion is very useful. Uh, of course I have quite a bit of funds. And then re restoring MP I remember was also uh, a valuable thing to have. Okay, so I have 250 left, and... There we go. I will zero out my funds just in case I need these potions during my adventures. There won't be another shop for a while. Best to spend all your money. Water of life and ethers are essential. Ready for sure? Didn't get any waters of life. She pro probably should. Uh, okay. So I probably don't need that many of the max potions. There we go. Aye, 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 cap. Okay, um, so webcam is blocking some of the user interface, but doesn't look like it's blocking any of the important user interface, um, and of course the main attack menu uh, where the main action menu is very well seen, as well as the players and the enemies. I think I pulled off the webcam <laughs> arrangement pretty well here. Um, so yeah, um, there isn't an overworld per se, you're just kind of thrown straight into the battles, whereas the overworld, overworld is added in uh, the later games. Player 1, Matt, is kind of the tank, and then player two, Natalie, is our magic, magic user. Banzai! Thank you. 
So with these early slimes, they're pretty easy. So I won't be wasting any of the super powerful attacks on them. Of course, Natalie's straight attack is pretty weak, but I think it's weak enough that it's not particularly useful against even these beginner enemies. So you see there are the two bars there. You have the health bar on top and the magic bar on bottom. And I am using uh, Natalie's magical ability, so her magic bar is being depleted, whereas I'm just using the basic attack for Matt. So uh, he's doing just fine in that area. <laughs> and we have these little helper uh, creatures that come in and sometimes provide uh, potions to aid us in our battles. So here we have our first mini-boss, which is a cat riding a giant slime. I can break out some of the more powerful attacks here. So the Pulsar is a powerful attack, uh, not only due to its power, but because it targets all enemies on the screen. Of course, we only have one at this point. you're hearing whatever is going on outside. Uh, sounds like a plane taking off to me, but I'm by a uh, mil nearby military base, so. Powerful attacks until they take out the boss.
There we go. Metal unlocked. King slime. Got a max ether. Okay. So now we're back to regular enemies. These will be slightly easier than the slimes which we killed in like one or two shots, but not by much. So Matt and Natalie's characters get developed quite a bit in the later games. I don't think there's too much character development here in game number one. This looks like a boss to me. Okay, uh, so Matt does need to heal. Probably take one more shot without dying. So, let's use the Pulsar. And pretty soon, Natalie's gonna need a Max Ether. Power Metal also heals the, our player characters. There we go. So Matt's out of the danger zone. we we'll use another Pulsar. And then use the Potion on Natalie in the next round. Legend. Okay. I'll use a Max Ether on Natalie. Screamer, and now the enemy's magic defense is down. Opens the door for Natalie's Pulsar. Censored. Poisoned. So I do think I did buy some of the anecdotes, so that will come in handy now. Mainly because the anecdotes were cheap. Status ailments healed. Balrog brings a random item and uses it on a random party member. Useful if low on items. Also sometimes appears at the start of your turn without being called. Well, let's bring in a Balrog. Ah, not quite as scary as the Balrog from uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, and this one appears to be on your side. Who we can summon to... Pika Blue attacks with one of two electric attacks, either targeting a random foe or all of them. Well, I want to see all of these eventually in this playthrough, so. 
if I believe that was censored. Poisoned! So yeah, I think uh, Pika Blue is probably a a copyright friendly version of Pikachu, which was likely what was in the original Flash game. It has been many years since I played the original Flash game, so that is largely speculative on my part. Deals holy damage to a single foe, also heals the user. And I think I'll use heal more this time. Help Matt out a bit, there we go. Metal Unlocked Beholder, got a Water of Life. And now we're back to the easy enemies. And it does not look like uh, Matt still has the status ailment, so that's good. There we go. Got an anecdote. Antidote, not an anecdote. Uh, although I suppose after playing this game, I shall have an anecdote to share. Looks like the fire attacks are doing quite well against the trees. We'll use the antidote on Natalie. Or I guess in this game, player two, I don't think they have been named as of yet. Another antidote. And antidote. Antidote. Wow, that is a, that is a hard word for me to say. Okay. Let's. We have another round of enemies here. Bring in the screamer. It's just just a fun one to play. Use 
fireball. Poisoned! No! Status ailments healed. There we go. So, with this new area, that is as good a place as any to end this first episode of Epic Battle Fantasy. Thank you all for joining me, and I hope you all have a great day. Uh, join me in a few days to see part two of this series.